This video would not be possible without the um, the, the contributions from Eric Dubay. Um, I haven't watched a Dubay video for ages, um, and I've not even seen much of him about on the circuit recently. Um, but massive shout outs to Dubay. I, I would ask for permission to mirror this Dubay, but I don't have any direct line of communication with you to ask, and it'll get lost in a sea of thousands, I'm sure. Um, so I'm, I'm going to beg for forgiveness rather than ask for permission because you won't even see the permission request. Um, this video is to demonstrate um, relative density disequilibrium causing acceleration and it's, 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 it's a challenge to anybody on our side, on my side, that denies or rejects this to debunk the egg test that I did recently or accept it and let's move forward. Because you can deny and ignore, ignore it as much as you want. It doesn't change the fact that changing the density of the medium did cause an acceleration. Either support it or you're stifling progression. It's that simple. You know who you are. If you don't support it, you're the problem. If you don't support it, the onus is on you to debunk it. So debunk it or support it, but stop backpedaling and being a dismissive little shit. Because we can all move forward once this gets sorted. Because their model dies with this, this one argument. There are several arguments that kill it. But this one argument removes everything. It removes Einstein's general relativity. It removes everything. Their whole model collapses. Support it or debunk it. But stop stifling it for fuck's sake. The 10 things that all flat earthers say. Number one, one extremely problematic side effect of taking the globe and flattening it out into a plane is that gravity makes no sense, and there is no reason for things to fall to the ground. Quite simply, objects fall or rise based on their relative density to the medium surrounding them. Apples fall because they are denser than the air. while helium balloons rise because they are lighter. No gravity necessary. This is why raindrops fall down through the air and air bubbles rise up through water. Everything seeks its relative density and rises or falls until settling accordingly. This is why a tiny pebble sinks to the bottom of the ocean, but gigantic cruise ships and aircraft carriers stay afloat on the surface. Because even though a pebble is so small, its mass relative to its volume, its density, is more than water. So it sinks. And even though a cruise ship is so large, its mass relative to its volume is less than water. So it floats. If Newton's apple had landed in a puddle instead of on his head, he would have seen the apple only fell through the air because it was denser than the air, but then floated on top of the water because it was less dense than water. Have you ever noticed how it's easier to stay afloat with your lungs full of air than it is when they're empty? Submarines float on the surface when their ballast tanks are filled with air, but when the vents are opened and seawater floods in, they begin to sink as the submarine's density becomes greater than water. Depending what depth they wish to dive, sailors simply adjust the ratio of air and water in their tanks, and when ready to resurface, they blow compressed air into the tanks, forcing the seawater out, lowering the density, 
and thus causing them to rise back to the surface. We can also prove this fact of relative density by filling a balloon with approximately half helium and half air. Since helium is lighter than the oxygen, nitrogen, and other gases that compose the air around us, filling a balloon with just the right amount of helium to compensate for and balance out the density of the plastic results in a gravity-defying, levitating balloon at equilibrium that neither rises nor falls. All objects accelerate towards the ground at 9.8 meters per second squared. That's an indisputable fact. Oh, really? Is it an indisputable fact that feathers fall to the ground at 9.8 meters per second squared? Is it indisputable that dandelion seeds fall to the ground at that rate? What about skydivers with an open parachute? What if we are falling through water? The rate at which things fall has everything to do with the relative densities between the object and medium, and has nothing to do with the fictional pulling force of gravity, nor does the rate or manner in which objects fall have any bearing whatsoever on the shape of the earth. But this type of sophistry is the kind of tacky glue that holds the whole heliocentric model together. And it is also an indisputable fact that any acceleration requires a force to produce it. This is how cars drive, planes fly, people walk, cats jump. It's how literally all motion works. Most of you address this problem by simply listing two words, density and buoyancy. Well, I hate to break it to you guys, but these are not forces. Forces are vectors. They have a magnitude, which means a numerical amount, and a direction, which means they have to point somewhere. Density is simply mass per unit volume, or how much matter sits in a particular space. It doesn't point anywhere. And buoyancy is simply a measurement of an object's tendency to float. You say that objects fall down because they are more dense than the air below them. Why down? Why not up? Or sideways? When you let go of a ball, there is air all around it. How does it know to fall down? Also, objects fall down when they're in a vacuum, which means there is no air below them. What's happening there? I could similarly ask you, if gravity is real and responsible for keeping all the world's buildings, oceans, and people stuck to the ground, then why does it have no effect on pulling down a simple children's balloon? Are helium balloons magical anti-gravity devices? No. We live in a density gradient. And since the combination of plastic and helium present in the balloon is less dense than the nitrogen, oxygen, carbon, and other elements in the air around it, it rises. Likewise, if I release the helium and then blow up the balloon again, the magical anti-gravity properties disappear because now it is denser than the air around it. But wait, I thought Professor Dave, he's not really a professor, cool story though bro, I thought not a Professor Dave said that it's an indisputable fact that all objects fall to the ground at 9.8 meters per second squared. Why doesn't a balloon filled with carbon dioxide fall at this indisputable rate? Gravity is clearly racist against balloons, feathers, and other objects with relative densities near that of the medium surrounding them. Huh Dave? So again, to answer your question, objects are not tending towards the Earth, they are tending towards their density equilibrium. The least dense gases rise highest, while the most dense solids fall lowest. Here on Earth, so much solid matter has piled up in the dense direction that we actually have a platform to walk upon. But we are not yet at our density equilibrium, so we are constantly pushing downwards. Just as a helium balloon that rises and hits a ceiling has not yet reached its density equilibrium, and so it constantly pushes upwards on the ceiling. And just by way of footnote, the common retort I get from ballers is that density, density is a scalar, not a force. Yes, density alone is a scalar. The density of a human or a water medium is similar. But its relative density to something else is then what gives you the vector. 
So if you get a human and water, they're very similar in, in, in density. But if you get a human and then some other object that, that you don't know what its density is, you can test it and say relative to the human, it'll, it's more dense or less dense. You don't even have to calculate it. Watch for them just claiming that density being a scalar, and that's not sufficient. It's relative to another medium, and that relativity creates the direction and the magnitude, and it's calculable, it's repeatable, observable, verifiable, and it's scientific. Science does not deal with the supernatural. Gravity, if it did exist, would be supernatural. 